Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. The Club of Rome enjoys a, a rare privilege, which consists in being allowed to be the agent provocateur, you know, the one asking uncomfortable questions. And I will do that. Provocations, good provocations are controversial, so be prepared. But my provocations this afternoon are also invitations. Invitations to all of you. The first is to think from a place of humility. A place of humility given by failure. Because as the Club of Rome, we failed. No? We became very famous 50 years ago by publishing the Limits to Growth, already asking uncomfortable questions, mainly the question, does development lead to collapse? Or could development lead to collapse? And in the scenarios that we, with the best of science and technology which was available then, we built a number of scenarios for the future. And yes, in most of them, the answer was yes. Development, the way it was conceived, but the way it is still conceived, leads to the collapse of civilizations, to hitting the wall of planetary boundaries. But there are other options. And that part of the message was unheard. There is the option of learning for humanity to learn a way out of that and to make the balance that we describe today as equitable well-being for all on a healthy planet. But we failed. The Club of Rome, the success of the Club of Rome would have been to dissolve because this challenge would have been taken for humanity, by humanity, you know, and the learning would have happened. Of course, it was not only a failure of the Club of Rome, it was the failure, the big failure of humanity, and this is the provocation for you, the big failure by sciences, innovation, and technology. If you think that we are closer to sustainable development today thanks to the incredible achievements of science and technology in the last decades, think again. We are farther away from sustainable development than we were 50 years ago. So the first observation is there is something in the arrangements of how sciences work and especially in how sciences relate to society that is preventing the learning. The learning of what? For instance, the learning of what is sustainable development? As President Koroshi has very well said, we don't know. So if you think that sustainable development is a well-defined thing, a well-defined destination, think again. It is not. If we don't know how to get there, we don't know what the destination is, and this is an incredible opportunity, of course, for it's an inquiry to mobilize all human capacities. The second call is a call from to question ourselves, for questioning, you know? from humility, the humility of failure, let's go into the questioning, the questioning of our role and why we haven't learned what we already know. What haven't we changed? And what is the question today? And the question is, what is sustainable development? What could be? What is human development? What do we mean by that? And how do we learn what we know? And let me tell you another provocation. It will not happen with science as we know it. Sorry to say. And when I say, and it will not happen, happen either with politics as we know it and with business as we know it. But here we are talking about sciences. And to be more precise, it will not happen with the processes of science, research, and innovation as they are organized and framed today. So our aspiration, we have been an active partner of the International Year, and we are very happy for all the partners who have made it possible and for, to UNESCO and to the General Assembly of the UN, and we will be even more active in the, in the decade 
And we see this as an opportunity to transform a deep transformation of how sciences operate and how they relate it to society. By doing what? By changing the questions. It's more than time that we put all of, all of us, all humanity at work to address the challenges of humanity, which if I may remind you, are existential. So it's very nice to think of the scientific careers of young scientists. But may I remind that there is no future for humanity on the planet if we don't take this challenge seriously. And in the lifetime of many of the people who are in this room, not in one century or two. So changing questions, starting from what the people, the people who have no option but to learn from the communities on the ground, what they are, they are facing the challenges that we talk about, and mobilizing all the uh, scientific capacities to address those challenges. That means also, of course, changing the relationships of sciences with society. Because, sorry, another provocation, it's all too easy to say, yeah, but it's not the role of scientists to change society. It's the role of politicians and business people blaming somebody else because something which should happen does not happen. You know what happens? Business people blame politicians, politicians blame citizens, citizens blame each other. And this is how we get the polarization that we have all, uh, all across. And this is obviously not the way to build a better future. So it's more than time to work across the many chasms that we have, that we have created, that we have deepened. We all know, so the, the interesting paradox is that we know that sustainable development is possible. It requires much more equity. There is no way that sustainability can be achieved without much higher levels of equity. Without uh, an equitable, we adopted two years, ag uh, two years ago the slogan, global equity for a healthy planet. Global equity for a healthy planet. So working across the chasms, the chasm of disciplines that has been said. I mean, we, and even transdisciplinary to me sounds too shy because it still has the word discipline in it. N you know, ecosystems, natural ecosystems don't have disciplines. Everything is interrelated. Everything is interconnected. So let's follow how life works because we know a lot more about how life works than we use in our uh, societal arrangements and in our actions. You know. Across generations, and I invite, again, an you know, invitation, I invite the younger people in the room and here and everywhere to be much more uh, radical and much more disruptive because it's particularly your future and the future of your children which is at stake. So it's from you, from your questions, from your questioning which we, by which we can make progress. Across the chasm of worldviews, and uh, thank you to Secretary of State Castillo Harry to remind us that originary peoples have science, have knowledge, and have even wisdom that we have forgotten, you know. So let's rebuild, let's re weave again all the threads of knowledge from ancient wisdom to modern science to work in this process of transformation. It's also, if I may, the chasm across genders, because I'm sure, and this is what makes me hopeful, act actually, that this mess cannot be fixed without a much more active participation of, of women, and it is already happening. And it is happening, interestingly enough, in most of the world, which is not in our radar, but go to, I went uh, last week, I was in Morocco, and I'm seeing gender equality being made real on the field in, uh, in uh, scientific research. Why? Probably because the woman of the younger women, the women of this generation, are eager to learn and to be actors of their future. So these are the transformative ambitions that we expect 
from the decades, and we will, as the Club of Rome, we will work actively for that. To make real something, and I finish with that, my last invitation is be humans again. We are scientists, we are business persons, we are whatever, politicians, etc. but in the end, all this is about reconnecting with our own humanity and the destiny of the whole of humanity. Thank you very much. <laughs>